Hi, I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Keanu. <laughs> and I'm Brett. And, and we are Dog, Dog Star. Star. And this is Amoeba What's in Our Bag. We're at Amoeba. What's in my bag? What's Amoeba your, Records, what's Hollywood. In your bag? What's in your bag? I'm going to just start with a squeeze East Side story. There's no other tempted by the fruit of another. Because this is like through my sort of college youth. And it's uh, Elvis Costello and Dave Edmonds were worked on this record with these guys. And it kind of came along at a time, you know, after the 70s when it sort of brought back a sort of sort of 60 beatle vibe of pop. And then when Elvis Costello was coming up and these guys were from England and um, and it's sort of like a perfect pop, power pop British record with just great songs, great lyrics. And it really uh, got me through college a lot. I think- 100% um, pure beat, no yeah, filler. That, that's, yeah, exactly. It is, it's just so good. And they wrote so many great songs. And um, I think a lot of bands were influenced by Squeeze that came after them as well. So they took that tone and- Fastball maybe. And, and went with it. You know, you know, Chris Tifford, Glenn Tilbrook, and they went through a few, they went through a couple bandmates along the way, but um, at the end of the day, you know, this this was, this was a really influential record on, on me. And uh, it kind of reminded me of like, oh, if the Beatles were in the 80s, what would they sound like? I was like, squeeze. So that's that's them. That's my first pick. The tougher, tougher, tougher it gets, the more my lips frequent. Now that is love. One of the joys of going to a record store is um, discovery, but also kind of like, ugh. You know, there's things in life, aren't there things in life you've heard about, but you've never really experienced? Seth Wagner? Yeah, so this is Wagner, The it's Ring an series. Apocalypse Now uh, soundtrack. <laughs> Yeah, so it's all five rings. What is it? Four, four dun, dun, rings. Dun, 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 dun. And then um, there it is. Der Ring des Nibelunga. Wow. Get ready, get set, go. Well, uh, geez. Um after Wagner, let me just, <laughs> let me just show you guys what real music's all about. I'm gonna start with the first record I ever owned. That would be 52nd Street by Billy Joel. This was gifted to me by my mother and she put it in a pizza box at Christmas so I wouldn't know I was getting a record. I remember trying to figure out who Billy Joel was from this picture and being confused because he's holding a trumpet and I thought he was a piano player. And then hearing the song Honesty and remember and, and realizing that is a very honest song, like his emotion and everything. So that song stuck with me. Um, this is my first record. Honesty is hard. I'm gonna go with, uh, this is funny because this record reminds me kind of like of a, a, an American version of a squeeze impact and it's a big star. It's kind of an odd title for a record, number one record. I think they got a lot of stuff for that, but this came out in 1972, which makes no sense because it sounds like it can't came out last week, or it came out in the 80s, or it came out in the 90s, or it came out in early 2000s. But it came out in 1972 on Stax Records, which makes kind of no sense at all either. And it's Alex Chilton from, I don't know if you remember him, from the box tops. He's uh, give me a ticket to an airplane. Give me a ticket for an airplane. Ain't got time to take a fast train. Anyway, so he moved out of that into this band, 
which I don't think there would be an REM if there wasn't the big star. I mean, or a lot of bands. And they, I don't know if they got the credit. They, they probably didn't get the credit they deserved, or maybe now they do. But this is one of the most beautiful records I've ever heard in my entire life. And the song 13 is, it's just, it's heart wrenching. Get to get for the dance. Now take you. Chris Bell and Alex Jilton. So this is, if you haven't heard this record, I'm sure most geeks like me have, but if you haven't, give it a listen. It's a big star, number one record. New vinyl, big fan of this band, Interpol. Oh. The other side of make-believe. My kind of aspiration. Hear this. Is that an ATM on the moon? What is that? It looks like an ATM on the moon. Okay, because you never know. The other side. <laughs> and then I guess they have money and then chisel? I don't know. All right, a little easier to follow than Wagner. Um, chronologically moving along in the youth of Brett Domrose and discovering songs. This album, Damn the Torpedoes by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. <laughs> A lot of albums used to be like where you put it on and you don't skip songs. This is one where you play all the way. I think every song is unbelievable. I think they're at their prime right here uh, as a band. Who produced that one? Is this it? is Jimmy Iovine oh, okay. getting involved and yeah. uh, making his stamp. A lot of turmoil in the recording of this, but what kind it, of it worked out. Product Jimmy, Jimmy and the drummer. Jimmy and, <laughs> and the band, uh, you know, the heavy-handed producer yeah. from, from all accounts and the band, you know, kind of fighting back. But I think uh, it was worth it, whatever they had to go through. It was worth it, and this made me start to want to look into picking up a guitar. That's a great record. Back to England, The Kinks. This is uh, The Kink Chronicles. Most people know the kinks from You Really Got Me, you know, that that kind of sort of the rumor was he took a little razor blade and cut his little amp to get that sort of distorted sound. And that's Dave Davies, the guitar player. Girl, you really got me going. You got me so I don't know what I'm doing now. But there's a whole nother side of them. I guess that there's like the, the kinks that broke in America and there's the kinks that stayed in England, that the songs didn't really translate across the globe. Maybe because they were so British, they're just so much, very English, you know? And they're all on this album, you know, David Watts, but Lola, of course, was huge. <laughs> So when I was a kid growing up, to me, this was one of the, great, the greatest records I've ever heard. And I think, you know, they're, they're just a brilliant band that wrote brilliant songs. And uh, it's hard to explain the sort of influence they have on other bands because it's such a wide variety. Maybe more so on more other British bands than maybe American bands, except for when Van Halen covered You Really Got Me. I think everyone was like, what is that? And then they sort of dove in and, and rediscovered the kinks. So, great album. Part of going into, um, for me, going into a record store is, I don't know what I'm gonna get. So this was in the experimental section of music and, um, it has no text, no, oh, there's a little text on the side here. No, there's actually no text. And um, so, I don't know. You're going strictly <laughs> off artwork. I'm going, I'm being influenced by the art and the headline of just experimental music. Okay. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. No, of course. There's a Cocteau title. Twins. No. Wait, no, what is that? Oh, no. Chondritic Sound. Oh, okay. Chondritic Sound. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can't wait. <laughs>top that man let's see what's in your bag yeah. well at this point i was fully immersed in guitar and i learned every note on this album def leppard pyromania <laughs> <laughs>
I think it helped me advance in a sense where once I learned the guitar parts on, on some of these songs, which all my peers at the time, 12, 13 years old as a boy, is very important, were in awe. So once I became the guitar player on that block that could play the Rush guitar parts, my world literally opened up. I got asked to join bands, I got asked to do talent shows, I, I was like the guy. So thank you uh, Moving Pictures for making me a better guitar player. What's bizarre about that band is the drummer wrote a lot of the. He wrote material. all the lyrics. He, the lyrics. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. really? Which oh, yeah. is all unusual. the lyrics. I thought Neil. Kenny Lee was like no, he's the Neil. singer, but Neil wrote yeah. the lyrics. Really? It's so it's odd. Oh, yeah. It's so odd. I mean, it, it's not odd. It's just he's unusual. Because you, you ever thought like, I oh, I wrote that. The drummer's like, no, I did that. Didn't I? It's discovery. like really. Yeah. It's discovery. Yeah. <laughs> I love. Who doesn't love David Bowie? And I and I love David Bowie. I have him, all this album, so I don't have one here. But I think about that that era and, and sort of the blueprints and his peers. And for me, it's T-Rex. This record also changed my life. A friend of mine turned me onto this um, album when I was in high school. And it has, you know, Jeepster on it. I'm just a Jeepster for your love, bang a gong. just this incredible guitar player, Mark Bolin, and this British band, um, and just all these incredible players on it. I'd never heard music that had sort of blues, bass, rock, pop, glam. It, it had everything in it that I just loved. This, yeah, T-Rex, it's incredible, Mark Bolin. All right, so me and the girlfriend, we love a good mug. <laughs> Got some Ami Amoeba music mug, thank you for that. And you know, and she loves ACDC and loves puzzles. So there's an ACDC puzzle. And then the treats, the amoeba are amazing. And then Kim Gordon, girl in the band, loves Sonic Youth, love Kim Gordon's bass playing, bass lines, bass how it's set in the music and her lyrics, her singing. It's cool to be get a chance to learn more about Someone who I grew up uh, listening to and being inspired by. Kim is the best. This album to me, everything I've talked about today kind of gets pushed into this one album. This album, uh, Tears for Fears, Songs from the Big Chair. I heard the song Shout, I was in uh, high school, and I heard it on the radio, and I went to the record store, and I kept saying, I want that song Shout, where a guy says Shout, and they, and I got the, shout. I got the style council, Shout to the Top. Shout to the top, shout to the top, shout. I bought three records, which Ooh, were all the council. wrong Shout, until I found this, and, uh, and finally I was like, oh my gosh, finally, that's the song I've been hearing that song. And, Again, every song is amazing. The, there's rock, there's heavy metal guitar on this album. There's new wave. I went through a goth phase. I was in the dance clubs. I was dancing to the New Order album Rob showed you. It's all in here. Everything. And emotion, passion, songwriting, production, heavy metal, pop, classical. Everything is on this album. And when I realized you could do all that in one album, and I could take that whole bag, of, and I could push all that into one thing, this gave that liberated me. And this allowed me to just be who I am today, where I don't have to worry about which piece is showing through too much, you know. Um, everybody wants through the world has a heavy metal guitar solo in it. So go check that out. Music! Yeah. Thank you, Amoeba. Yeah, thank you, Amoeba. Woo!